methods for a little synthetic killing. It's all harmless fun. It's hard to believe that it's been almost two years since Ukulele was announced on Kickstarter. After hitting the initial goal in less than one hour, it was apparent that the old school Rare fans would be getting the game they've been yearning for. After two years since its announcement and almost 20 years since the original Banjo-Kazooie, Ukulele is indeed the spiritual successor that was promised, for better nor for worse. The obvious nods to the original Rare games is apparent and hard not to compare, but we will do our best to limit it. Everything about Ukulele screams nostalgia. Since the Yuka team consists of mainly former Rare employees, the hope of the magic returning has not been wasted. Ukulele is a continuation of the magic that many had thought disappeared as they grew older, but can now enjoy with a new generation of gamers. From the coloring of the world, to the music score that is reminiscent of Viva Pinata, and the character design that only the team at Platonic Games could pull off, it's one of the best. As what is probably the obvious point of the game, you play as Yuka, a very tame and level-headed chameleon. Alongside Laylee, your hothead bat friend, you both venture into areas to retrieve pages that are remnants of literature that have been stolen by Capital B, a very Gru-looking villain, and his number two henchman, well, duck, Dr. Quack. Pages are used to expand the map which allows the player to explore previously unexplorable areas like castles, entryways, and world bosses. What may turn some players off who are used to a map full of objectives in open world games is that there are no waypoints. Having said that, the maps are not overbearing in terms of size. It is relatively easy to navigate your way through the world and remember what areas you have visited and what you haven't, which is the whole point. For example, when you start the first area, there are going to be places you can't reach quite yet because the game wants you to explore the area as much as possible to collect quills that essentially serve as your currency. You will not necessarily be able to go straight to the first boss and expect to be successful. This is where the RPG element to ukulele comes into play. In each world, you will come across the local vendor that allows you to buy new attributes that will help you traverse the world, as well as give you an advantage to reach those hard to reach areas to collect more pages. There are also tonics that can be equipped after performing certain tasks that allows you to roll longer for races, or the ability to add to your life gauge, just to name a few. These tonics can greatly increase your chance for success, but there are some that you won't be able to collect until later, or after the main game is complete. The greatness of ukulele is that it can be played on your own time. If you want to simply collect all the pages to be able to have an easier time unlocking new worlds, you can. Or you can do the bare minimum and continue onwards. There is plenty to do, secrets to discover anytime you want, and the game doesn't push you to go one way or another. For completionists, you can always go back to the world if you want, if you are willing to traverse through Hybrid Tower to do so. The mini arcade games that you can play within the main game or from the main menu is a nice break from the actual game. If you want, you can invite up to four players for adversarial mini-games to help share in the fun of ukulele. We should probably mention the co-op gameplay during the campaign, even though it will more than likely be rarely used. The second player can control a small reticle that seems to simply pick up butterflies that age into your health, in which they can be placed on screen if the main player needs them. This is very reminiscent of Super Mario Galaxy in a way, except for Mario did it better. There is simply not enough for the second player to do for anyone to want to keep going with the main game. If there is more to do with the second player feature, we haven't found it. While nostalgia is nice, it is also Ukulele's biggest flaw. The decision to keep the characters' voices to be nothing more than random noises that many will compare to the early Banjo series is strange given that voice acting is normal in these type of games in the 21st century. As a gamer that has aged along with the industry, I found that the consistent squawks and other noises coming out of the characters alongside the dialogue text became so monotonous that I kept skipping over it. This is a minor gripe in an otherwise great game, but it stands out nonetheless. Having said that, skipping the dialogue may prove to be a mistake. A great amount of dialogue are winks and nods to the gaming industry, other games that the developers may or may not have worked on in the past. There are other silly gags along the way for all ages, but older gamers will appreciate the meta nature of the game. Ukulele knows what it is, and is unapologetic in its presentation and dialogue. There is a chance that my gaming nostalgia may have had a lot to do with my positivity towards this game. Ukulele delivers on its promises it made, which is sometimes unique for a Kickstarter project. 
Fans of platform gaming from the N64 era will be pleased by what the small team of Platonic Games has produced, and there shouldn't be another large gap in time for their next outing. If ukulele can prove anything, is that there is a certain magic that is still wanted by gamers, and that small animated creatures and big colorful lands can fulfill the void. I give ukulele a 4.5 out of 5. Thanks everybody for watching this review. Please like the video, please subscribe, please share by all means. For more reviews and Let's Plays and other stuff sprinkled in, please subscribe to Nerd Theory. I'm Brian, and I'm out.